I have released the first of my serialized essay on the nature of software that is an adaptation or a sort of reconciliation of Christopher Alexander's nature of order uh, to software development and software as an artifact itself. Uh, the first one, I'm doing him roughly in order of the book in the same sequence. So uh, the first one is levels of scale. And that concerns really the detail, this sort of increase in detail that we have to go sort of from this perimeter where we're dealing with chunky concepts and ordinary everyday things and goals that ordinary people care about, especially people who are cutting the checks. And then we have to zoom in uh, and increase our detail of what the system has to do and that is how you get to code. I mean, you can start with code, but then you will very quickly notice that you kind of peter out. And so there needs to be a kind of overarching uh, concept. So the essay, this particular one, is about applying or taking levels of scale, the concept of levels of scale, and saying, how do we apply that to software? I do make a remark that scale in software is typically understood to mean scalability. And this is not about scalability. This is, this is increasing detail. Uh, in fact, I argue in the piece that scalability is actually usually a bunch of things that are operating all at the same scale. You have this sort of ocean of operations that are all doing the same thing. And so this is emphatically not that. I was remarking on Twitter as I was finishing up the first of these that the, there's levels of scale in sort of going from philosophy to art to architecture and how it was sort of thinking about how modernism and postmodernism you know, are terms in architecture, but they're also terms in philosophy. They're also terms in art, you know. And how, like, philosophy, like, what does it take, right? Like, what does it take to produce philosophy? You just got to, like, read things, you know, look around, talk to people, observe the world, you know, and then you write it down. And that's basically what philosophy is. And, you know, we can talk about the, the, the conditions that you need to get that actually picked up, but, but the actual, you know, producing philosophy is very cheap. It's a one-person job. It can get done in, you know, you can write it over a weekend if you, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, it might take years, but like, we're talking a single person over a lifetime at most. Then you think about art, and art is similar, depending on what it is, but, I mean, it can kind of sort of goes up in order of magnitude, potentially, because, you know, art, you actually have materials, and you actually have to, like, train to figure out how to use them and stuff, uh, which, you know, you kind of have to do with philosophy, but, I mean, you, I would say, like, art, you know, is harder, because you actually have to, like, make your body do things <laughs> a lot of the time. And of course, like the materials cost money and, and, and so on. So you got to like figure out how to get that. Um, and if you've got staff, if you're like Ai Weiwei or Damien Hirst or Jeff Koons or something like that, you know, you've got this whole shed full of people that you've got to pay. And so you got to get money for that. You've got to get, or if you're getting grants or whatever, you know, that whole thing, that's a process that takes time. Uh, if you're delegating that, then you got to get money for that. Uh, so art is kind of like a bigger enterprise than philosophy, so it's like stuff is going to be slower. And then finally, architecture, like architecture is anything to do in architecture is millions or potentially billions of dollars. And so you need rich patrons. And what I was thinking of is sort of like, like how much uh, art and philosophy precede architecture in the sense that they they're just cheaper to do 
than architecture. And like by the time you think about it, like by the time I'm going to go, you know, I'm Frank Gehry and I'm going to go make a pitch to the, you know, the city council of Bill Bow or whatever the hell, you know, whoever is procuring that, however they do that. And I show them this thing, this crinkly whatever titanium object. And that's going to be my pitch. Uh, I think they actually do a, 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 I think they did a design competition. It doesn't matter. But um, the bottom line is, is like the people selecting you, people picking you for the job, like have to be kind of steeped in the art and the philosophy. You know, maybe they're not reading the philosophy directly, but the artists are, you know. Um, maybe they're, and so they, there's, there's got to have this sort of diffusion of the cheaper artifacts, of this cheaper stuff has to be out there already in order for the patrons basically to like look at the architecture you know the architects pitch. And of course the architects are reading you know they're seeing the art and they're looking at the philosophy so they you know that's what's inspiring them to come up with their pitch but like that cur the there has to be currency for those like memes and tropes in order for the patron to look at this and be like yes like what you're doing is good and not just some bullshit so that is just kind of, that kind of level of scale thinking is kind of just on my mind all the time. So I entreat you to check it out. Buttondown.email slash nature of software. I will put a link uh, in the thingy again. Uh, it is a subscriber only serialized sort of exclusive going to be probably sets 15 properties so it's going to be 15 i've already got two out one introductory in the first one and then i'll probably have a conclusory one so 17 18 probably i put them out every couple weeks two three weeks somewhere in between there it'll be done by the beginning of next year and it'll probably turn into a book after that so if you don't want to read it in pieces you can wait till then and read the book anyway have a good weekend I'm gonna finish my coffee